What's up everyone? So today's video would be going to be on the most important source of protein, especially for the vegetarians, that is the soya beans. Not only the soya beans, but there are also different products which are made out of soya beans, which is available in the Indian markets. And there is a lot of confusion between these products and the amount of protein each of these products give to you. So in this video, I will be clearing your confusion related to these soya bean products by comparing them depending upon their manufacturing process and the amount of protein each of these products provide to you. And I will not be using the data provided by the calorie counting apps for looking into the amount of protein each of these products are giving you. Instead, I will be reading the nutrition label of the products so that you can get a better clarity about the amount of protein which these soya bean products are giving you per 100 grams. So let's look into the nutrition and the manufacturing process of each of the soya bean products. So soya bean as the name says is just a legume which is obtained from the soya bean plant and it has its origin from East Asia but nowadays it is manufactured all over the world while Brazil being its highest manufacturer. So these soya beans are obtained from the soya bean plants. Once the outer covering of the soya bean fruit has been removed, the inner beans are called as the soya beans. And also the immature soya beans are an edible product with the name of edamame, which is usually consumed in the Western countries. Now if we take a closer look into the amount of proteins the soya bean provides us, it is around 38 grams per 100 grams of soya beans. So it's quite a good amount of protein which these beans provide to us. Now let's look into the different soya bean products which are made after processing these soya beans. So after the oil extraction from these soya beans, we can obtain soya bean oils. So this is a very lengthy process, I am not going into the depth of this process, but you can get an idea here that after oil extraction, you will be able to obtain the soya bean oil and from the residue which is left, it is further grinded into soya bean flour. This is known as the defatted soya bean flour which is devoid of fats because the oil has been already extracted from the soya beans which is generally the fat content. So these soya bean flours are also sold in the markets. So let's have a closer look into the nutrition of this defatted soya bean flour. So you can see here that the fat content of this defatted soya bean flour is very low. It is almost negligible that is 1 grams. And the amount of protein is almost similar to that of the soya beans which is 38 grams. Since the fat has been already extracted from the soya beans in the form of the soya bean oils, you can see that the fat content of these soya bean flours are very low. So these soya bean flours can be used with the different other flours to make your chapatis, rotis and increase the protein content of your chapatis and rotis. Now all the products which will be made from this defatted soya flour will have less fat content and higher protein content since the fat has been already removed. So from the defatted soy flour, the further water extraction is done to obtain the soy milk. So here, there are two ways of obtaining the soy milk. Either you can perform the water extraction from the defatted soy flour or the water extraction from the original soya beans. So the fat content of the soy milk obtained from the defatted soy flour will be less compared to the fat content of the soy milk which is obtained directly from the original soya beans. Now let's look into the nutrition label of the soy milk which is present in the Indian market. So you can see here that per 100 ml it is providing us with 1.7 grams of fat and 3.2 grams of protein. So here we can't compare it with the other products because it is in a liquid form and 100 ml is too low. The serving quantity will be almost 200 to 300 ml which will provide you with more proteins. So you don't need to worry about that but to just get an idea about the protein content we can say that 3.2 grams it will provide per 100 ml. So with this product you can see that the fat content here is very low so we can assume that it has been processed from the defatted soy flour. And if it has been directly processed from the original soya beans then the fat content of the soy milk will be slightly higher. Now when we split the soy milk using the lemon, vinegar or any other chemicals, we obtain some residue over the top. These residues are then converted into cubes and sold as tofu. And it is also called as soya bean paneer since the process of making the tofu is almost similar to the process of making paneer from the cow's milk. So here also the fat content of the tofu will depend upon the soya bean milk. Whether the soya bean milk has been extracted from the defatted soya bean flour or it has been extracted from the original soya beans. Now let's have a closer look into the nutrition label of the common tofu product which is available in the Indian market. So as you can see here, the fat content here is low that is around 5.84 grams per 100 grams. So we can assume that this is also been made from the defatted soy milk. And the amount of protein which it is providing is around 14.6 grams for 100 grams of tofu. And since the carbohydrate content is very low here, so this amount of protein is also quite good for a tofu of this brand. Now the next product which is made out of the defatted soya bean flour is the soya chunks which is commonly available in most of the Indian markets. 
So the process of making these soya chunks out of the defatted soya bean flour is very lengthy and requires a lot of machinery. I am not going into the depth of the process but the soya chunks is almost available in every market in Indian society. So it is an easily available option for the soya bean products. Now if we have a closer look into the nutrition label of the soya chunks, you can see that it provides almost 50% of proteins. That is, it is providing 52 grams of protein per 100 grams. And the amount of carbohydrates is around 33 grams while the fat amount is negligible that is 0.5 grams. So you can see that among all the soya bean products, soya chunks is providing us with a higher quantity of proteins per 100 grams. And the benefit of soya chunks is that it is very cheap compared to the other products and it is available everywhere in the Indian markets. Now the next product which is made out of defatted soy flour is the soya chaps. So the soya chap is a combination of soy flour, maida and oil. So to make the soya chap a dough is obtained from these substances and then the strips of soya chaps is obtained from this dough. So in terms of appearance it looks almost similar to tofu but instead of cubes it is present in the form of strips. So if we have a closer look into the nutrition label of the commonly available soya chaps in the Indian market you can see that the fat content again here is very low because it is made out of the defatted soy flour. The protein content here is around 15.20 grams which is almost similar to that of the tofu. So now let's compare each of these soya bean products to figure out which one provides us with the maximum amount of proteins. So you can see that I am comparing each of these products based upon the quantity of proteins they provide per 100 grams. But one thing you have to note here is that the serving size of each of these products will change and also the volume of these products will change based upon the density of the products. But by using a standard unit of 100 grams, we can at least get an idea about the maximum amount of protein which is provided by each of these products. So you can see here that the soya chunks and soya flour are providing us with the maximum amount of protein while the soya bean milk and the tofu is providing us with the minimum amount of proteins. But that doesn't mean that they are not providing with a good quality of protein. You can see that the fat and the carbohydrate content is very low in that case. So even if you are getting some amount of protein, the overall macronutrients and the calories will be less in case of these products which are providing us with a less amount of proteins. So all in all, after comparing all of these soya bean products, we can conclude that the soya chunks provides us with the maximum amount of protein per 100 grams but it even provides us with some amount of carbs and fat. So the overall calorie provided by the soya chunks will not be very less in comparison with the tofu which provides us with a less quantity of protein but the carbs and fat content is very low in that case. And all the other soya bean products will lie in between those. So if you are looking for maximizing your protein intake then you can go for soya chunks but if you are looking to maximize your protein intake while keeping an eye upon your total overall calories then I would say that you can go for tofu. So if you ask for my personal preference among all these soya bean products then I always go for soya chunks first because it can be used in a lot of recipes. You can make soya bean chili, you can also use it with different gravies because these soya chunks absorb the gravies properly. So even though they taste bland, once you mix with the gravies then you can get some good taste from these. Second preference is for the soya bean flour which I mix with my rotis so as to increase the protein content of the rotis which I am having. And the third preference goes to the tofu and the soya chops which can also be used in different recipes such as tofu salads. You can make tandoori's out of soya chops and try different varieties using these vegetarian protein sources. So I try them whenever I get bored with the normal non-vegetarian food stuff then I go for these products to add some variety into my meals and get those proteins from them. So now using this chart you can easily choose the best soya bean product according to your goals and the amount of protein which you need on a daily basis. So have a closer look into the chart and choose the product which ideally suits into your meal planning. So I hope I cleared a lot of confusion related to the soya bean and the other soya bean products which are available in the Indian markets. So if you found this video helpful then like this video, share with everyone and subscribe to my channel for more such informative videos on workout and nutrition. And if you wish to train with us then check out thesupplestand.com where we provide evidence based nutrition as well as workout coaching to enhance human performance. So we will meet in the next video, till then stay supple. Stay strong.